Oh my gosh, okay, I'm gonna have to probably film this quite quick because it is very hot in <laughs> New York and also the humidity. You'll watch, watch this video and my hair will just expand uh, very quickly. Hi, I am Sophie Sumner uh, and this is episode, oh, whoa, four? I think I'm so Sophie. Let me double check that. Today, I think I'm just gonna talk to you about uh, my, my favorite films growing up and um, you know, scariest films I've seen, et cetera, et cetera, because why not? Um, I hope you're all having a lovely day so far. Yeah, here we go, let's give it a go. You know what, I wanna start, I don't know why it came to my head, but I remember the very first time. Is that a bear? Can you hear that? I think, oh, it's the dog. Oh, <laughs> it's not a bear, it's just my very small fluffy multi-poop. See, the heat, the heat gets to Sophie. Brits, Sophie, Sophie's a Brit does not work well with the heat, I will tell you that. I kind of melt and expand. So I remember the very first time that I went to the cinema underage. I don't know what you have in the US, but in the UK we have, um, I think it's you, so that's anyone can watch it, Universal, uh, PG, Parental Guidance. Um, then it goes to 12, you have to be over 12 years old. Then it's 15, you've got to be over 15. And then it's 18. <gasps> yeah, that's the rating system. And I went to, my parents really wanted to go and watch Bridget Jones, which is fantastic. It was the first one, I think it came out in 2011, I might be wrong. So I was 11 and the rating was a 15 and I was absolutely petrified about going in there. I thought they were gonna find out and I was gonna have to, like I go down to the police station and oh my gosh, I was gonna get arrested. But obviously my parents were like, I'm sure it's gonna be fine, so you're gonna be all right. So we went and saw Bridget Jones and I think when we went into the cinema, I like hid behind my two sisters who are older than me and uh, my mum and dad and like, I must have worn something really stupid. I'd have to ask my mum, but I think it was probably like some silly kids in heels. Anyway, I got in, I watched it. I thought it was brilliant. It was one of my earliest memories is there's a film that some of you might know, actually they recreate it in Perks Being a Wallflower, so that might help, but it's Rocky Horror Picture Show. And my parents used to have parties at the house and they were quite good. Like, I mean, I was not going to bed. I still don't like sleep too much. Um, so I'd like run around as they were kind of having their parties and I'd wear like my little fairy outfit and stuff. And I was like, yeah, I'm a grown up. I also have a big age gap between me and anyone else in my family. Uh, so I always thought I was a very small adult, I guess. <laughs> you just So I'd like run around and my parents would be like, all right, okay, like, um, you know, maybe you should take some time or whatever or go to bed. I'm like, no, I just want to watch Rocky Horror. Now, I'd, I don't know why it was Rocky Horror. Oh, actually I do, it's because they have some great opening songs on Rocky Horror and I wanted to, and I like to sing along to the songs. So they used to let me watch right up and it was a VHS recording of the TV. So it would have like the advert breaks when you used to be able to record off the TV. And um, they they used to let me watch right up until there's like a weird like sex scene in it. And I used to know all the words at my parents' parties. See, hair's expanding. Um, <laughs> my parents' parties, I would go up and be like, um, let's do the time warp again. And what did she say, Columbia? Well, I was walking down the street just having a drink when the uh, something of a guy gave me an evil wink. He shook me up, he took me by surprise. He had a pickup truck in the devil's eyes. He said to me and I felt ashamed. Time and nothing never will again. Anyway, I used to do that. So I pretty much very underage and way too young watched Rocky Horror. Well, I remember going to a friend's sleepover and watching What Lies Beneath, which is absolutely terrifying. And um, it made me very scared of bathtubs. It's Michelle Pfeiffer, who is stunning and beautiful and amazing actress, um, and Harrison Ford. I can't remember what happens, but she, I don't want to give it away, but she um, does something. I think she like is dead in a bathtub or something. It's like a zombie. And I was absolutely terrified. And after that, I couldn't, um, I had to sleep every night with a film on when I went to sleep. And that was always bring it on every single night for like three years I watched Bring It On on VHS. It had a little bunk bed and then I had my little TV at the bottom. Um, and to this day, I still fall asleep with films on. What did we watch last night? Oh, The Rum Diaries we watched last night. The scariest film, the film that I was absolutely terrified of growing up was E.T. Um, to this day, my friend Jackie has an apartment and we went for a Christmas party and she has like a life-size E.T. And to this day, I i mean, I, I don't know why she has a life-size ET, but I made her like cover it up. This is like a couple of months ago before shutdown in, at Christmas. I was like, oh my God, it's terrifying. And I made her cover up this ET. Um, I don't know why I'm so scared of it, but I'll tell you a story. I have four, 
I think about two years of my childhood, I had a reoccurring dream that E.T. was coming to get me, which is ridiculous because he's meant to be a happy alien that like, you know, a lovable alien. I don't actually know the story. It's like scarred from my memory. I've never watched it since. And if you're in the UK, you will remember that they had BT. So BT is like the equivalent of US of like AT&T or Verizon and they used E.T. and so they had E.T. doing an advert saying E.T. phone home and it was B.T. phone home and I still can't watch those adverts. My favourite film growing up was a little strange. Um, I So I, I loved the Disneys, I loved um, Lion King, uh, Aladdin, I loved Annie um, and then I loved Evita with Madonna I'm not quite sure how I even got to see it first, but I, I loved it. Maybe I loved the music. I love musicals, <laughs> so um, that makes sense. But I must have been like eight when it came out, I think. And I begged my sisters to get it for me for Christmas and nobody would get it for me. I think I did in the end, but they were like, you're eight, you shouldn't be watching this. Like, this is so weird. And I would sing along and I used to know all the words to Evita. So yeah, uh, like um, that was one of my favorite films. And then Titanic, so I think my grandma quite liked Titanic. So I had quite a dark um, liking of films, which I guess is a little odd. Evita, Titanic, um, of course, along with all the Disneys. We loved all of those. <laughs> the film growing up that I really wanted to watch that I wasn't allowed to watch was American Pie. And then I got my way and we watched it with my mum and dad, which was quite possibly the most awkward thing. I, do you know, I've never seen that film since. Um, oh my gosh, when did it come out? 99 or something? And my parents, when they, when there was a film that I wasn't meant to see things, they'd have a pillow and they'd say, Sophie, pillow. And I'd grab the pillow and put it in front of my face. Um, and in American Pie, I did, and then I looked. I haven't got a clue <laughs> what was going on. I don't know when we learned sex ed in school, but it wasn't at nine years old, I'll tell you that. So I had an awkward watching of American Pie with my parents. I do not advise that um, at all. The film that I have seen most at the cinema is Love Actually. Ooh, I think I went to see it at the cinema four times. I love that film. That film makes me so happy. I do now save it until Christmas. I'm not, I won't watch that throughout the year. I wait until Christmas and I watch Love Actually. I think my favorite scene is probably when he's dropping the cards. Oh no, or when they get married and all. You know what, everything in that film. That is a British classic. Richard Curtis is my hero. I think my favorite director is Baz Luhrmann. Have I got a picture? I think I've got a picture. Picture! Um, I met Baz Luhrmann at a premiere once. Well, there you go, there's me and him. Um, I met him at a premiere and I was so nervous. It was the Great Gatsby one and I got to talk to him and we were engaged in a conversation and I thought it was all going so well. Oh yes, me and Baz, best friends, look at this. Oh my gosh, he's gonna ask me to produce on his next film, how amazing. No, what I did is I said, and I don't know why I said this at all. Think of all his good films, Moulin Rouge, Great Gatsby, we're at the premiere. No, no, Sophie decided to say, I love Nine. Now Nine is a film by Rob Marshall, <laughs> who is a completely, and he just left the conversation. And, it, and I know it's by Rob Marshall, and it was just, you know one of those things in life where you just say something and you have no idea where you said it, you have no idea where it came from, and it just kind of falls out your mouth. And I didn't realize until the next day, and I was like, that was so weird, our conversation was so good, and then he just left. And then it dawned on me and I was like, Nine, it's not the same film. So I totally fluffed that one up. The nicest, one of the nicest directors I've met was Tyler Perry. Tyler Perry, I think is incredible. He's wonderful. And I met him, I've actually met him twice and he was so kind. He is the type of person that in a room will talk and spend time with everyone and he won't look past you. I don't know, in film there seems to be a horrible habit and fashion of people kind of being like, oh my gosh, it's so nice to meet you. And you're like, oh, <laughs> is it? I don't know if you're telling the truth. <laughs> so he really looks everyone in the eye and he really listens and I'm a huge fan and I love his work. It's, it's, it's fun. So big fan of Tyler Perry. The film that I can't keep my eyes open through is The Reverend with Leonardo DiCaprio. I think it's called The Reverend. Oh my gosh, I don't know why. I went to the cinema to see that film and we got the really expensive seats. It is a cinema in New York where you basically get like a flat bed, it's like 30 bucks. And I fell asleep on the opening. Well, I woke up and the credits were going and I was like, amazing. I just slept through all the like commercial things, trailers, this is great. 
and it was the end of the film and I had actually successfully gone to sleep as soon as the titles were coming up and woken up as they were coming up again slept through the whole thing still haven't seen it we should watch that one doesn't he live inside a bear or something a film that I can quote all the words to is Devil Wears Prada Mean Girls those two i'm sure there's more oh i love that film the makeover scene where she's like going through new york and it also makes me fall in love with new york all over again um so devil wears prada i doubt there is anyone watching this that hasn't seen that film my favorite actress you know i think um meryl streep meryl streep i think is one of my favorite actresses she's fantastic incredible there's not a film that i uh, every single film she does is insanely amazing. I think my favorite of hers is Devil Wears Prada. She's so good in that film. Oh, the humidity. I'm already, look at this, I'm already expanding. I just, I can't deal with the heat. I'm really bad in heat. When I first started dating my boyfriend, I was like, I'm not one of those hot girls in the, uh, in the sun, all these girls in their bikini photos looking amazing. No, 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 I am not like that. I just, I, I, I just, I'm a puddle. I'm a little puddle, <laughs> a little grumpy puddle. A film that surprised me was, Actually in quarantine, my boyfriend was like, oh, we should really watch John Wick. And I was like, what? No, I'm not gonna do action, no. Uh, it is fantastic, it's really good. If you haven't seen it, I would highly recommend John Wick. <laughs> it was really fun. And all the fight scenes and the, um, the fight scenes are like choreographed, that's what I, oh, I got it right. I can normally not say that word, choreographed. Check out me. Really beautifully, the fight scenes are done really, really well. Um, and uh yeah it's just a really great film so there you go there's one for you to watch tonight you know i i actually had a panic attack in a film once i don't often get panic attacks which is extremely lucky so if you do get panic attacks um oh my gosh i feel for you it's 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 not good it's rough but for some reason jumper have you guys seen that film he gets like locked in a you know where you keep bodies in the medical examiner and you bring them out he gets locked in one of those and I had a full-on panic attack and I had to leave the cinema. So that's the only time I think I've left the cinema without watching the end of the film. These are a few of my favorite things. Oh, I love that one. Sound of Music, another classic, classic, classic film. Favorite film in quarantine that I have watched was this film called Wrestling With My Family, I think. It's Florence Pugh. Um, oh my gosh, it's so funny. It's got The Rock in it. It's a British film. Um, my boyfriend loved it. We were literally cry laughing. I was about to try and do something really lame there and make that a thing, like crafting. <laughs> oh my gosh, I, I am so bad. I'm the worst. I just like occasionally amuse myself with really unfunny things. Um, anyway, the film is really good. I'm not sure if it's on Netflix. I'll find out for you guys, but I would highly recommend watching uh, watching that film. It's just really feel good and, and puts a smile on your face. So that's a good one. I love you all. Thank you all for watching. Um, let me know your favorite films or scariest films. I don't know. It's always fun to share films. If you go on the app particular, then you can do uh, film sharing with friends. And it's a laugh. It's kind of like dating films. Then you choose your favorite, a bit like uh, Tinder or something where you can swipe and choose your favorite films. Anyway, I adore you all. I really hope that you're having a lovely, wonderful day. And I'm sending you big virtual hugs. That's my virtual hug. It looks more aggressive. <laughs>